With me now on the line is Donald J. Trump running for president, the Republican nominee from New York. Uh, Mr. Trump, thanks for joining me on Breitbart News Daily. And first of all, congrats on the new hotel that opened yesterday. Oh, thank you. It's great. It's great on Pennsylvania Avenue. I figure I'll get there one way or the other. We'll get to Pennsylvania Avenue <laughs> one way or the other. But we hope it's the way I'm doing now with the campaign. <laughs> well, you, well, you, you'll have two properties on Pennsylvania if things go according to plan. Uh, let's talk about the hotel quickly because I, I was so uh, flabbergasted by the media trying to hold it against you that you delivered a hotel uh, that you you bid on. It was a government bid. And for $200 million, you put $200 million more in it, finish it under budget and ahead of schedule. And the Clinton News Network, as it has become known, uh, actually sort of attacked you for it. What was that about? Amazing thing happened. I thought that it would be perfect timing. In fact, it just happened to be completed uh, right before the election. And I said, wow, what timing? That's a gift because we built it under budget and ahead of schedule, which is something the government never does. I mean, when they build a hospital, it'll, co- it'll start off at $600 million and cost uh, $2 billion. Okay, it's, a, it's horrible what, what goes on. I look at the numbers, and they build a highway, a road, a tunnel. It could cost three, four times as much sometimes. So I said, you know, this is great. We have a building. It's one of the great. It's going to be one of the great hotels of the world and one of the most beautiful buildings in the country. The building's the exceptional. Yes, yeah, built in 1889, uh, and it's a landmark, and it's, it's just an incredible building. So I said, wow, this is great timing, you know, even for the campaign. And so we opened it, and all I heard – now, you have to understand that I've been doing more campaigning probably, they say, than anybody maybe ever in terms of presidential. I'm from 6 in the morning till 2 in the morning, literally. I get, I get in sometimes at 2. Today we're going to Iowa. We're going to Maine, Manchester, New Hampshire. We're all over the place. And, and uh, you know, all day long it's uh, different places. So we came in from North Carolina – and we immediately left for Pennsylvania after the hotel. And they put out a narrative that Donald Trump takes time off from his campaign. Mm. Now, Hillary Clinton goes home and stays there all day, and she'll come out for one event or two, you know, not even two events. I mean, she really rarely does two events because I don't think she has the strength to do two events. But but she'll she'll do very little by comparison. I'm not knocking it. I'm saying... You know, she's got this machine behind her, the Democratic machine, which all it is. That's what she's got. And the media is behind her so much. So she'll do, a, you know, a very short session and go home and go to sleep. And they put out the narrative like I'm taking time off from the campaign. Actually, I viewed it differently. I mean, I, the, the under budget ahead of schedule is a very important thing. This is a, this is a big say. success for you. This is what you yeah. do. And importantly, my, my children were involved, and I wanted to honor my children because how could I have an opening of a massive hotel with thousands of employees? You know, we had thousands of construction workers, everything. And how could I possibly do that when, you know, I'm opening this big building on Pennsylvania Avenue and not run in, run out, cut the ribbon, run in, run out, right? So I did that, and they, had, they made such a big deal over the fact that I was taking time off from the campaign, which, by the way, would have been about the first time in two months. And uh, I thought it was disgusting. I thought it was terrible. I honored my children. We honored the hotel itself. I mean, it's a tremendous hotel. And we honored all the workers. I mean, even the workers there, we had, you know, tremendous numbers of workers and construction workers there that built it over a two-year period. And even the workers there would have been very disrespectful if I didn't show up. So I thought it was a terrible thing. And you're right, uh, the Clinton News Network uh, really built it up. And it's just amazing. So the polls are looking great for you. The the ABC Washington Post tracking poll has you closing the gap eight points in just four days. We have our Breitbart Gravis poll where you're only down one nationally. You're up in Florida, according to Bloomberg. So the path is there. And I really think that, that the key has been Hillary Clinton has been in the news as opposed to Donald Trump scandals, uh, either real or fabricated. Uh, the last week or so, you guys have kept Clinton in the news. How do you keep her in the news for the next 11 days? Well, we're doing our rallies. Uh, we are, tr- you know, you're seeing the crowds we're getting. We're getting 25, 30,000 people to a rally, and we're doing our rallies and doing a speech that very much. Uh, it's not the same speech at all. It's just a speech that very much talks about the same topics: Obamacare, which is a disaster. We've got to repeal it or replace it, and we can do that with something so good. Uh, taxes. We talk about taxes are way too high. She's giving a tax increase. We're giving a tax decrease. Uh, we talk about regulations. We talk about the depleted 
military and how we're going to take care of the vets. We're going to really take care of our vets for the first time, maybe ever. And uh, she can't do that. She doesn't. She thinks the system is okay the way it is. So she's got some really bad things, saving our Second Amendment, uh, which is so important. It's under siege. So we have some things that are, you know, we have, we have the right points, and the press has been unbelievably unfair to us. Uh, you know, when you talk about different things, a lot of things they just make up. You'll make a statement that is a perfect statement, and they'll find a way to take that statement, chop it up, and make it bad. Uh, it's incredible, actually. It's incredible. This is Breitbart News Daily on the Sirius XM Patriot Channel 125. Alex Marlowe host. Donald J. Trump is our guest. Mr. Trump, could you explain to people who might not be a huge fan of yours but also do, do not like uh, Hillary Clinton, especially these conservatives out there, uh, what's your pitch to these voters who might be holding out and might be uh, ensuring a Clinton White House? Well, Alex, one of the things is the United States Supreme Court. You know, we're going to pick justices in the mold of Judge Scalia, Justice Scalia. Uh, conservative, pro-life. Uh, we're going to pick uh, Second Amendment people, people that respect the Second Amendment. And we've put out a list all vetted by Federalists, Federalist Society, uh, highly recommended by them. And we have a list of 20 judges. And we're putting them out. And it's been the list has been unbelievably well received because I wanted to make sure they understood that, you know, we're putting out a very important list. And not that I'd pick some liberal judge after they chose me. So I, I actually put out a list from which I will only pick. In other words, I will only pick one of these people given to us by uh, the Federalist Society and also Heritage, who uh, run by a great guy, Jim. Uh, but we, uh, so we have a list of great judges. And if for no other reason, that should be a reason because... <laughs> You know, it doesn't get talked about enough, but the United States. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's I think that's on the money. I would submit another one. And I think this was should have been in a fair media. This would have been the signature moment of the campaign is the WikiLeak that Hillary Clinton told a Brazilian bank for a quarter of a million dollars that she wants hemispheric open borders. Give me a reaction to that quote. Uh, incredible. And I mentioned it every single speech, but she wants uh, open borders. Totally free trade. I mean, you know, she wants trade. So you lose your businesses and you lose your country if you do that. Uh, but absolutely. Uh, another key vulnerability she has, and she is, it's been 18 months she's been on the campaign trail. She has not been able, she, she's not had to answer one question about her State Department approving 20% of U.S. uranium to Russia uh, and the Clinton Foundation bagging $145 million in the process. Uh, how is this possible? And, and your thoughts on her Russian uranium deal? There has never been anything like it. To me, that's one of the worst things. And I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to get picked up by anybody. They don't pick up a lot of things. They won't pick up all the things that came out yesterday. Now, one thing I will say, the WikiLeaks seem to be getting worse and worse. Do you agree I with do. that? I mean, it I, seems I do, like yes. the, the initial ones were bad, but they seem to be getting worse and worse. You know, one that you may disagree with me, but to me it was very important. When Donna Brazil had the answers to the debate or the mm. questions to the debate, and she gave them to Hillary Clinton, and Hillary Clinton used them and didn't turn them in, I thought that was incredible. I mean, that was, that was in terms of honor. So Donna Brazil got the questions to the debate. And she gave the questions to Hillary Clinton. This came out in WikiLeaks also, as you know. And Hillary Clinton, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I can't use these and turning them in, Hillary Clinton used them and only got caught because of WikiLeaks. I thought that was a terrible one, I mean, to be honest with you. And you so, and, and, and so when you talk about the system being rigged, it's not just necessarily voter fraud. A lot of it has to do with the media. Yeah, it's voter fraud too, uh, but it's also the media. And it's also the fact that she's even allowed to run. Hey, look, the FBI looked at many, many criminal events, including the deletion of 33,000 emails after she got a subpoena. She got a subpoena. She got a subpoena from the United States Congress. And then after getting the subpoena, she probably said, oh, we've got to get rid of this stuff. They deleted 33,000 emails. I mean, if you look at nothing else, I usually use that because it's so simple. You know, that's like simple. But if you use nothing else, nobody's allowed to do that. And the private server that came off the private server. And I'll tell you what, those emails contain BAFO information. Those emails 
they have got things on there that are for them to do that and then bleach the emails, a very expensive process on top yes. of it. Get rid of her iPhone. And, and why number. would you do that if you didn't have something to hide? Uh, no, Mr. Trump, no. you, you, you've been so and generous. even getting rid of the phones and, and they smashed them by hammer. Yeah, by hammer. Right. Yeah. Classy move there by the Clintons yet again. Mr. Trump, you've been so generous with your time. I, I would love to have you back and talk about debt, talk about Obamacare. Uh, there's so many more key issues we could get into. But I, I want to close with you with a question about uh, what I believe is a movement that the, you're you're the you're the figurehead on top of it. But I think that the the impact of this race is going to last for a very long time. Uh, in American history. And I wanted to speak, uh, wanted you to speak to your role in terms of this, the transformational nature of your campaign uh, in Americans' politics and what the establishment has to fear. Well, Alex, it is a movement. I've never seen anything like it. I go and uh, we will have crowds of 20,000, 25,000 people routinely uh, in an area where she would go and have 300 people, 400 people, and can't even fill up the seats. This is a movement like no other. I mean, Bill O'Reilly said it, and, and many others have said it. And these are people that don't necessarily even like me. But O'Reilly said this is the single greatest political phenomena he's ever seen in his lifetime. And he said, and he's seen a lot of them. But he said, he said I've never seen anything like what's happened, what's taken over. And it's, I'm the messenger. Believe me, I'm the messenger. These are the forgotten people. These are great people. They shouldn't be forgotten. These are great people. They're brilliant people. They're smart people, really uh, amazing people, and they love the country, and they've totally been forgotten. I call them the forgotten men and women of this country. Uh, they, their jobs have been taken away violently, viciously, and maybe most important, stupidly. And they've been shipped down to Mexico. Their factories have, have been uprooted and moved to Mexico where they hire Mexicans to do the work. And then the product comes nicely into our country, and uh, no tax, no nothing. Well, that's going to all change. And you will see such change on that. It's so easy to stop that from happening. But the politicians are all taken care of. First of all, in many cases, they're not smart. But they're also taken care of by special interests that want this to happen because they have ownership interests and lots of other reasons for it to happen. But the jobs, I have traveled around this country and I have seen places that were vibrant 25 years ago. I've seen NAFTA, what NAFTA has done to our country is incredible. Probably 40% of our manufacturing jobs have been shipped to other places. And, 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 and it's only getting worse. And now they want to do TPP, which will be not as bad as NAFTA, but it'll be very bad. It'll be a continuation of the same. And somehow they've, they've agreed with my message. I mean, that's one of the messages. The borders are a message. You remember when I announced in Trump Tower, we talked about borders. We talked about people coming into the country. Well, I was right. People are coming into the country, and many of those people are violent, violent. And whether it's Kate Steinle or uh, Jameel Shaw or thousands of other people uh, that are being just absolutely decimated by, by criminals that are pouring into the country, uh, it is a very, very sad thing to see what's happening, a very, very sad thing. And... People see this, and then you have the military, which, as you know, is depleted, and we want to build it back up, and I want to take care of the vets and the Second Amendment. We have NRA total approval, but all of those things. But I think the biggest thing are really are the borders, the people coming in and the borders. We're taking in Syrians now by the thousands, and we have no idea who they are. And Hillary Clinton wants to raise it by 550%. And we have no idea who these people are. They can't vet them because they have no paperwork, no nothing. And they could be ISIS. And it could be ISIS from within. And I say, so, it, it's so sad, Alex, when I watch it and I see it. And I've given this speech and it's been hitting for a long time. And I'll tell you what, you see the polls. I don't know if you've been seeing what's happening over the last week. But we're being, we're being thrust right to the lead of this, of this uh, election uh, we had a poll, which I think was a total phony poll, but last week we were 12 down with ABC. Yes. And they said they've never seen anything. Now we're three or four down. Right. And we're, you know, considered to be virtually tied. I don't believe the 12. I'm not sure I believe the three. You go to Florida, you see lines that are four blocks long. You've been hearing about it. In Florida, they're voting, early voting. And the lines are four, they're four blocks long. Uh, look at North Carolina. Look at Ohio, look what's happening, the, the spirit and the, 
uh, the love. And I think Pennsylvania is going to be a big surprise for people because I'm getting crowds in Pennsylvania like like practically nowhere else. And so it is a movement. It's a movement like they've never seen in this country. And I tell you what, uh, it, it will be a really unified country if we win because we're going to do the right thing. And if we lose, I just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. People are asking me that question. I just don't know. That's Donald J. Trump. He's a New York billionaire riding a populist wave in the Republican nomination. Has a lot of momentum in the polls. Thank you so much, Mr. Trump, for joining us on Thank Right you, Alex. News Daily Thank with you very Alex. Much. Thank you, sir. We'll hopefully catch up with you later on. You could obviously spend quite a bit of time with that man. He's got a lot to say on a lot of the core issues of our time.